Well, you know what they say. There's no replacement for displacement. Or is there? Hmm. Hey guys, Stipe here, bringing you a list of the top seven really fast cars with teeny tiny engines. Begin. And what a better way to kick things rolling than with the Ferrari F40. This triangle with a wing was the first ever production car to break the magical 200 miles per hour mark. And it did it with the help of a rather small V8, only 2.9 liters. <laughs> 2.9? I used to drink more than that. But of course, there was more to it than just that. Ferrari had also strapped two gigantic turbos on that pygmy of an engine. And that, well, let me put it to you this way. No other 2.9 in the world accelerates as brutally as this does, and the car knows it. Some may call it the turbo lag, but I think this is just the F40 giving you a chance to reconsider. It's like, are you sure? Alrighty then. That's 480 horsepower of utter fury. But isn't that too few to reach 200 miles per? Modern supercars need over 600 horses to do such speed, and they are bestowed with modern aerodynamics too. On the other hand, the F40 had an aero coefficient of a triangle with wing. And still, it goes like a bat out of hell. I guess it is true what the old man Enzo said. <clears throat> aerodynamics are for people who can't build an engine. And from the most expensive car on the list to the cheapest one, the beautiful FD RX-7, which also has the smallest engine too. Only 1.3 liters. Okay, that doesn't sound like much, but it will still give the mighty Supra a run for its money. <laughs> How is that even possible? Well, this 1.3 isn't what you'll find in a Fiat 500. Nope. This is a rotary. Instead of pistons, there's an oval chamber with a spinning Dorito in the middle of it. Weird thing, but it still goes through all four combustion cycles. Suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. What you do then is take two such rotors, put them together, slap on a pair of turbos, and off you go! Wow. The end result is 280 screaming horses, packed into something that's smaller and lighter than one of Cat Deming's breasticles. Noise. That is what makes all the difference. A lighter engine makes for a lighter car, which then helps acceleration as well as going fast around corners. Plus, because this rotary can fit in a 34 double E size bra, you can bet that it can fit under the hood too. Anywhere you want. Like way back for that perfect 50-50 weight distribution. And that, my friends, is why the RX-7 can beat the Supra around the track easily. However, down a long straight, the Mazda will be left in the dust by this, the dorky looking GM EV1. While the fastest FD will run out of breath at around 162 miles per hour, this unassuming little electric car will push on all the way to 184. Never mind the RX-7, not even a Ferrari 355 could go that fast. And this was no plaid, lucid, or Nevera kind of electric car. No, GM had put only one motor in their creation for a maximum output of just 136 horses. It ain't much, but for a city car, it's an honest amount. A more important thing to mention is its lead-acid battery with only 16 kilowatt hours of go-go juice, which again is a far cry from the 100 kilos that you'll find in modern EVs. As you can imagine, the range was poor, so General Motors pulled every trick out of its sleeves to stretch it as far as possible. Tricks like super narrow, low resistance tires, lazy throttle response, and most importantly, a super slippery body. The EV1 had a drag coefficient of just 0.19. It's the lowest number of any high volume production car ever made. That's why it can go so fast. You don't need a ton of power if you're punching a hole in the air like it is even there. Too bad that GM put an 80 mile per hour speed limiter on it when it went on sale. Shame, it would have been cool to pass a Ferrari in this. Uh, what can you do other than continue the list with the latest Mercedes C63 S E performance? Although a victim of a serious shrinkflation, this new four-pot hybrid Merc is still packing a Tyson's punch. A 680 horsepower punch to be exact, or in Tyson's words, 680. 
In case you were keeping score, this is the third most powerful Mercedes on sale today, right behind the AMG 1 hypercar and the GT4 Super Saloon. Needless to say, it is quick, seriously quick. And before you dismiss its achievements for having an assistance of an electric motor, wait till you hear this. Even without the hybrid, its 2.0-liter 4-cylinder still makes a stupid amount of power, 480. In terms of horses per liter, this family saloon beats the Koenigsegg Agira R. Yeah, that's insane. Agira was a record-breaking hypercar. It's expected to have an engine that's pushing the limits of what's possible. But why do the same in a four-door Merc? What was their excuse? None. They did it because they can. They did it because the German engineering. And before you say, uh, my Tune Civic makes more power per liter, Sure, but does it have a warranty? I thought so. Next up is the Jaguar XJ220, a big, beautiful disappointment of a car. The party flyer said it would have a V12 from a Le Mans racer, scissor doors, active aerodynamics, four-wheel drive, and a top speed of 220 miles per hour. The production model, however, had none of that. The new stricter emissions requirements forced Jaguar to go with a 3.5-liter twin-turbo V6 instead, and in light of the recession, the rest of the promised stuff was ditched too. That was supposed to make it more affordable, but the buyers still weren't biting. Out of 1,500 people who paid the deposits, less than 20% ended up buying the car. But just because it didn't live up to the expectations, that doesn't mean that the XJ220 was all bad. The 3.5-liter V6 came from the Group B rally car, and you know how insane those things are. So insane that it actually produced more power than the V12 prototype. And sure, it didn't go 220 miles per hour either, but 212 was still a world record. It was the fastest car ever made, and on top of that, the quickest around the Nuremberg too. This Jag was the ultimate hypercar, but the hype wouldn't last long. Just one year later, the McDaddy F1 came out and stole all of its thunder. Well, shit. But hey, credit where credit is due. 213 miles per hour with just six cylinders is mighty impressive, even today. Speaking of six, let's talk about the Porsche 911, a sports car with a flat six engine in the wrong place. This ass-heavy layout may not have been a problem for a VW Beetle, but in a fast car such as this, let's just say it had a tendency to take corners nose in, ass out. Naturally, adding a turbo to the mix makes things even worse, to the point that the car was nicknamed the Widowmaker. But after 50 years of sending their clients to an early grave and the sheer stubbornness not to move the engine position, now we have this. The latest and greatest. Extremely easy to drive, 650 horsepower, 3.7 liter Turbo S, or in other words, the fastest car in the real world. Everything else that I mentioned so far needs a specific track or a lot of preparation to do their thing. Not so with the Turbo S. You can just get in and go. Launching the 60 takes a mere 2.7 seconds, and it can do that all day long without fading. Keep the foot planted and you'll hit 205 miles per hour. But the most impressive thing is the way it refuses to crash. Thanks to all-wheel drive, rear axle steering, torque vectoring, and who knows what else, it will take corners like it's on rails, even on roads as rough as Danny Trejo's face. <laughs> Out in the real world, racing from A to B, forget about your typical million-cylinder hypercars. The Flat 6 Turbo S will get you there, the fastest. Now, before I reveal my number one, here are some honorable mentions. See if you can guess them. And at number one, it's another Jag. Turns out the XJ220 wasn't the only time they almost made a promised car. One time they almost made this, the CX-75. They were super serious about putting it into production, even made five fully functioning prototypes. But then the 2008 happened, and the car was abandoned quicker than a gym membership in February. So what did we almost get? A 900 horsepower hybrid hypercar aimed to go head to head with the holy trinity. You know the ones, McLaren, Porsche, douchebag. But while those had sizable V12s and V8s in the back, 
Jag was going to this war with a 1.6 liter four cylinder only. Mind you, that engine was developed by Williams Engineering, and they know a thing or two about extracting lots of power from small displacements. A 1.6 liter in their F1 car makes over 1,000 horses, so pushing 500 in the CX is a piece of cake for those guys. Still, that's 312 horses per liter. How? Well, you give it everything you've got. Turbocharger? Sure. A supercharger? Why not? 10,000 RPM limit. <laughs> Let it spin. Let it spin. That's how you get 500 horses out of a 1.6. Then add an electric motor to each axle for full-blown 900, and you have a car that accelerates to 100 miles per hour faster than the Veyron, produces less CO2 than the Prius, and travels on electricity alone further than the Volt. What a car. And what a shame. <sighs> See you in the next one.